We've come to honor you this morning. We've come, Lord God, with our hearts prepared to worship you, to start this service in worship and adoration of you, our, our Savior and our God. And we just ask that you commune with us this morning as we set this time aside for communion with you. We ask your anointing over the worship, over the worship leader and the band, Lord God, and each one of us as we lift our hearts to you, Jesus, in, in praise and thanks to you. We pray your anointing over the entirety of the service that you would have your way today in us and in this place. In your name we pray, amen. Feel free to stand if you'd like. Um, I'm just reminded of, um, you know, when the priests came into the tabernacle, they had to do some purification ceremonies. They had to have wash their hands and get themselves prepared to go into the Holy of Holies. And I just, I just want to have us consider that this morning. And if we could just take a moment and just ask God, like, you know, just purify me and cleanse me, Lord God, before I come into your presence, Lord, before I come into this place of worship with you, because ultimately we want to be um, pure before the Lord and, and um, Lord God, I just ask, Lord God, that you would purify our hearts this morning, that you would prepare our minds, our hearts, and our spirits, Lord God, to be right before you, Lord God, to um, just set this time aside, Lord, just for you, not um, worrying about anything else, Lord God, not considering other things right now, forgetting the past, forgetting the future, and just being in this present moment with you, Lord. Um, yeah, wash us clean by your blood, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let's begin to worship the Lord with We Fall Down.
presence, Lord. We're thankful, Lord God, when we can experience the nearness of you, Lord. Lord God, the train of your robe, let it fill this temple with glory, Lord. Let the train of your robe fill this temple with glory. Lord God, you have our adoration, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise your name, Lord. Holy, holy are you, Lord. The great I am. Holy, Lord God.
Holy Spirit, we want to see you move in this place. We want to see you manifest in our lives and through us, baptizing us in your holy fire, Jesus. Each one of us, Lord God, from the youngest to the oldest, we want to be moved in your spirit, Lord Jesus. We want to be vessels of your spirit moving today, Jesus, completely open to be used in your will. Come, sweet spirit, we pray. Giving us boldness, giving us strength, giving us wisdom and direction to move in your glory, Lord God, to spread your gospel to our loved ones in need, to see healings and miracles around us, Jesus, and within our own bodies and our own lives, Jesus. We want to see you move like never before. And we want to be used in your purpose. Let every earthly distraction that would keep us from being fully used in you fall aside. We want to be useful vessels. We want to be a useful church. Give you glory and honor today, Jesus. What a perfect atmosphere this is to receive the communion of the Lord. You know what we do? We do because we were commanded to do it, but that's not the only reason. We do it because he is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. He is our physician. He is the keeper of our hearts. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship you in the way that we do, the way that you've commanded, Lord, but because we love you and we adore you and we praise your holy name. Amen. We're going to do communion now. I'm telling you, the Lord has been so good all week. I have to tell you a personal testimony. Ken and I found ourselves in a situation we didn't know we would ever be in. And it wasn't horrible. It wasn't anything, no death or anything, but just something that we didn't think we would encounter. And it happened. And all I could say was, God, you know, you know the situation. There was one person holding up something that we needed to get done. And I said, Lord, you know, you know, you can change this man's mind. You can, I know you can do it, Lord. I put it in your hands. And then when, when you're at your lowest point and you think nothing can be done, and that's not having faith, but you get there sometimes. Then the phone call comes through. Oh, he changed his mind. Everything's okay. <laughs> and it was totally God. It was totally the Lord. And I have nothing but praise. And I have nothing but honor for the Lord. This morning I worship him. I feel like the service was for me. <laughs> I'm just so grateful. I'm just so grateful and thankful. <laughs> For the Lord, I'm going to be reading, <clears throat> of course, out of 1 Corinthians 11. If, has everyone been served yet? No? Okay, I'll wait a few more minutes. But I just do want to give thanks. Amazing, amazing God we serve. Amazing. Um, and sometimes we lose sight of that fact in our day-to-day -day lives. But he is an amazing God. Thank you, Andy. He's awesome. He's wonderful, and we all know that. We all know that. But sometimes in our day-to-day -day living, we forget to just say thank you. Thank you, God, for everything that you've done for us. We appreciate it. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm a blubbering mess, but I just feel the presence of the Lord so strongly, so strongly. Again, 1 Corinthians 11. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body 
which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Donnie, would you pray over the broken body of the Lord? Heavenly Father, we are so grateful and we approach you with such honor <clears throat> and praise that you sacrificed your body for us and that this bread represents that sacrifice of the holy body that was broken in obedience and willingness, not by force, but because of love and mercy and grace that flow from so we give you all honor, thanks, and praise as we recognize and commemorate that sacrifice of that holy body that was broken on that cross for us, that we may be free. Amen. Thank you. Take of the bread. Thank you, Jesus, for your body. We thank you, Jesus, for your body that was broken for us. Thank you, Lord. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your blood yes. um, atones for our sins, yes. Lord, yes. and that there's no other atonement mm -hmm. as pure as your blood, Jesus, mm -hmm. and that we, Lord, don't earn your love, Lord, but we receive this freely, this gift that you've given us of salvation. We thank you for this blood that you shed for us because by your stripes we are healed and we await your return, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for your blood. Thank you, Father, for your blood. You know, I really have felt the presence of the Lord today, and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. You know, he's always willing. He's always willing to be here if we're just willing to open up and invite. He works on our hearts in mysterious ways, and he performs his works in mysterious ways. 
but he always does it. He always does it. He always shows up when we need him, doesn't he? He shows up when we don't need him. We just need to realize that he's always, always, always with us. Thank you, Becky. That was beautiful. <laughs> and it is always so precious to follow up such a blessed worship service with communion and just take it one step further in recognizing and acting out our love and devotion for our Savior and recognizing his sacrifice and why we're here. We're here because our Savior bled and died and rose again and offered us eternal life. It's amazing that the blood is both a symbol of atonement and life. It, it was the death, it was the resurrection, and it is our life. It is, you know, you think of blood as, as staining, as something that you, you can't get it out, right? And yet it washes us white as snow. And when the Lord, our God, looks down and sees us, and as we're covered by the blood of his son, he sees perfection. He doesn't see sin. He sees his son's perfection. And in that, we are justified and made righteous in his sight. And there would be no other way, no possible way. The law did not work to cleanse the people. It only worked to show their unrighteousness and that there was no way they could comply. There was no way they could meet the standard of God. And today... We have the joy and the hope that he offered us that way, that his son willingly gave his life. His body was broken, his blood was shed, that blood atones for our sins as we accept what he did for us and gives us the hope of eternal life. Not just the hope, the guarantee. He's not taking it back. He died for us, he did it for us, it was done for everybody. The Bible says whosoever. We've talked a lot of, about, uh, I, I, I love doctrinal discussions, and we've talked a lot about the concept of election and the concept of free will. And I think the, the wiser Bible commentators uh, uh, recognize both in the Bible. Because some hit rock bottom and say, God, I, 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 I'm done. I'm done trying to do this on their own, on my own. Others get knocked off of a donkey and you know in the road to Damascus and the Lord appears in front of him and says stop the Lord has different ways of, of reaching his people I always kind of figured that the Lord was getting Paul one way or another he had a purpose for that man and if that's what maybe there were opportunities that Paul missed before that and God said I got to step it up for this one he's not getting it who knows but it is always grace and it is always mercy that the Lord whether it, you know, some of us like myself are raised in church, and that's grace and mercy and the commitment of parents that love us. Other times, you know, children don't have parents that raise them in church, and the Lord will find another way to reach their hearts and say there's an opportunity for you. And certainly prayer works that out as well. We, we, there's people that it just seems we can't reach, hearts that we can't turn. As much as we try and as much as we try to demonstrate the life of God or the love of God and, and the, you know, there are so many ways that God can use us. But prayer is such an important part of that to the Lord. I think it, it, it matters to the Lord that we show love and care for our fellow brothers and sisters and say, God, save that person, rescue that person. And if there's something I can do, use me. And if there's something, send somebody into the life of that person that can turn their heart to you. He is merciful and long-suffering. Sometimes his long-suffering nature goes against our thirst for justice, right? But we're thankful that he suffered long for us, and uh, he will mercifully do the same for others. I just stand here before you this morning feeling so inadequate unworthy, but so thankful that the Lord loves us as we are. In all of our flaws, in all of our weaknesses, in all of the messes that we get ourselves into or create ourselves, he loves us still. I'm so very thankful. There are about 
15 Sundays in a year. That's 15 times that the Holy Spirit turns his searchlight on us. It's 15 times at least in a year that the Lord, as we come together, obviously I know that's not the only times. As a matter of fact, if you don't gasp and fall off your seat, as I had to make a quit, you can cut this out of the, out of the final. As I had to make a little quick pit, pit stop there and I was just praising the Lord and speaking in tongues, it brought back a memory when I was a little girl. My grandma Nail was a very, a prayer warrior, put it that way. She knew the Lord intimately. And there was never a time that she wasn't connected to the Lord. And I can remember when I was a little girl, she had a, a Bible on the back of her commode in the bathroom and she had her little prayer box in there and I can remember her just having a ball in the Lord <laughs> with the door closed in there. It's kind of how I felt this morning. Hope you don't think that's horrible. <laughs> Sorry if you do. I'll try not to let it happen again. <laughs> this morning this service could not have gone any more beautifully to fall into what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to do three things this morning. I'm going to read an article from Christianity Today. It's about four years old or so. I'm going to play a song on the piano and recite the words. It didn't come out as a singable song but a recitable thing that I want to share with you this morning. And then we're going to play a worship song from YouTube that some of you may know and I hope you can be blessed by because I feel like it's ordained of the Lord that we do this. Is that okay with you? The writer's name is Carl Vaters, V-A-T-E-R-S, and this was first published in May, in the May issue 2016 of Christianity Today. And the headliner says, how will we know when the next great move of God happens? Because it will be felt outside the church Two, all my life I've heard preachers talk about a coming worldwide revival, but it hasn't happened. There have been pockets of excitement from the Jesus movement of the 1970s to local spiritual outbreaks. Think about the Brownsville revival in Florida and the Toronto blessing in Canada. One thing they all have in common, the average person has no idea that they happened. Because of that, I thought I would never say this, but something is happening now. A God thing is coming. There's a God thing that's been nagging at the back of my brain tickling at the very root of my soul, nudging the deep recesses of my heart. I feel it. It's formless, but it's rising on the fringes of the church right now and outside the church. It's popping up in the frustrations of sincere believers who are sincerely fed up, in the longing of seekers who don't like what they're finding. And deep in the souls of believers like you and me who keep on looking, keep on working, and keep on praying for more and more, for better, 
for Jesus himself. I'm tempted to give it a name, but I can't because it won't fit into any of our buzzwords, old or new. It isn't renewal. It isn't revival or reformation. It isn't emergent. It isn't emerging or even relevant. And it will probably look more pre-modern than modern or postmodern. And it will make us scramble for new words to use to describe it. But they all will fall short. It's more than a movement. It's not about worship styles, gimmicks, or denominations. It's extra denominational, multi-ethnic, and cross-generational. It's about holiness without legalism, grace without moral compromise, and peace that passes all understanding. It will move us forward without leaving our foundation. Oh, I'm so thankful. Yes, our foundation matters. It will drop us to our knees in prayerful repentance. And it will lift us to our feet in grateful praise and send us out in an explosion of the great commandment and the great commission. It will reaffirm the authority in all its beauty, holiness, grace, and yes, messy reality. It will be opposed by the cynics studied by the scholars and embraced by the hungry, the thirsty, and the empty. But it will not be ignored. This will not just be in the church, but it will be through the church. It won't be focused on just making us feel good about ourselves, because it will make us better. It will meet people where they are, but it won't leave them where they are. It's coming to the church, but it's not coming for the church because Jesus wants to do something new through us, not just among us. And maybe that's the most important thing about this move. It will find its roots in the local church as it always does, but this time it will also be God's gift for those outside of our buildings, our denominations, and our other extra biblical structures because it has to. There will be a new missionary flow it will probably start in nations that have not traditionally been Christian because what God's already doing in those nations is being felt outside their church walls. While Christianity is increasingly seen as ineffective in Europe and most of North America, there are pockets of Latin America Africa and Asia, where some amazing moves are, of God are happening now. And that's what Jesus wants to do everywhere. And he will if we let him. Don't miss what Jesus wants to do. The next great move of God will make a lot of church people uncomfortable and they may miss out, mostly because they'll try to do one of the following. Hoard it. Control it. Make money from it. Fail to see it because it doesn't look like they expected it to look. Reject the good in it because of the extremes in it. And yes, there will be extremes 
in it. There are unhealthy extremes in every move of God because there are people in it. That's why much of the New Testament was written, to lovingly but sternly correct the extremes of the early church without rejecting the whole. You remember in Mark 9, 39, the disciples chastised another a worker for Christ for driving out demons in Jesus' name because he wasn't one of them. And what did Jesus say? He said, if he's not against us, he's for us. Leave him alone and let him do his own thing. In so many words, those who will experience God's next move in all its explosive beauty will be the ones who can't wait to dive into it despite the messiness of it. Yes, something's coming. I don't know what it is, but I know this. I don't want to miss it, and I don't want to keep it to myself. All three of these things that we've talked about this morning, and I'm going to play this uh, message in a song, if you will, are about the same thing, about a move of God. Joel 2, 28 30 through 32 says, It will come about after this that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. Even on the male and female servants will I pour out my spirit in those days. I will display wonders in the sky and on the earth, blood, fire, and columns of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And it will come about that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be delivered. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be those who escape, as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. Last week I mentioned, the Lord put this in my spirit. And I thought, Lord, I don't have any answers. All I have is questions. And he led me to this article. And then I pulled up several other ministers that I love to listen to. And guess what they said? What will the next move of God look like? We don't know, but we're looking for it. And that's what this talks about. What will the next move of God look like? This is different than anything the Lord's ever given me before. What does a move look like today? Will it be like the past, the same old ways? For God said, behold, I'm going to do a new thing. When my spirit, I pour out on all of you. So what does a move look like today? The mighty hand of God led his people out of Egypt's bondage. And through the wilderness he led with clouds by day and fire by night. In Joel, he gave the former and the latter rains. And he promised our children would prophesy our old would dream their dreams. 
our young men would see godly visions. Even our skies would sing the story with blood moons, fire and smoke, and the earth will bring forth its new wine, its new grain, and oil. So what does a move look like today? In Acts 2, a violent sound of rushing wind was heard. And that sound filled the whole place where they were sitting. They saw tongues of fire and it fell upon every one of them. And the Holy Spirit gave them new language. And they were speaking about the mighty, mighty deeds of God. And Peter said, oh no, these men are not drunk as you suppose they are. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. So what will a move look like today? I don't have an answer. I only have a question. And I hope you have the same question too. So that we'll be watching and looking and we'll know when it comes because it will reach others besides just us. Dawn, if you would cue up the song. How many with me would lift your hand and say, we need a move. I want to move. I want to see it. I want to see it here and I want to see it out there. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Oh, shabakoto siya bakataya boko shatai. Ya to rabako siya boki shianda ya boko sanda ya boki. Yato kiato ko shatanayabo kiato. Shukoto soya bakatayabo kisi. O ko shiamakasai. We bring our hungry hearts, Lord. We bring our thirsty hearts. Oh, Lord to fill us up so that we can take a move through us, Lord, to others. Shokoto soya bakia toki. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I hope you felt the presence of the Lord this morning. I know I have. And it's what we come for, isn't it? Father, we just pray that we set our hearts upon you and that we keep them there, Lord, and that we see with open eyes, O oh God, what you are doing. Oh, we pray for the things that we don't see. We pray for the things that we want to see changed and have happen. Oh, God, but don't let us miss what you are doing among us, Lord. Challenge our hearts to get deeper. Challenge our hearts, Lord, to go further. That that move starts in us. Oh, thank you, Father, for being here with us today.
Thank you for loving us, Lord, and reaching out to us in our inability, in our humanity, and raise us up to be in your presence. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Go with us from this place, oh God, but not from your presence. And we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Are all minds clear? I want to ask. Anyone have a, anything to say this morning? And I can see there's three men dressed in white. It looks like Jesus. He never says anything to me. He just looks at me. And if I start praying, and every once in a while, he'll, it seems he moves a little. But there's three of them, and they're all dressed in long white robes. And they, it's the face that, that I see of Jesus and the way people will paint him here. He never touches me. He never says anything to me. And I, I'm always sitting down when I talk to him. And he'll stand there for a few seconds, minutes, or I don't know. And they all go away. But I feel such a peace. And I can lay there and get, go to sleep. I always look to the morning. First thing I try to do is get up. And I can't. And this morning, I couldn't even move. I had to ask Becky to come and help me get out of bed. But I know he's there. He lets me know he's standing there and he's watching over me. I don't know what he wants me to do or say, but I'm waiting on him. He'll tell me. And when, I, when he tells me, I'm, I'm sure he's going to tell me to get up and walk. And I'm looking forward. Father, we're so thankful for this manifestation. We're thankful, oh God, that you watch over your own. Oh God, I'm thankful that in, oh God, in those times that she looks and she sees you, Lord, that you're there for her. Oh Lord, we know that she will soon be in your presence, oh Lord, and she'll know it's you, Lord. She recognizes that it's you, oh Oh, God, oh, Lord, I just pray that you give strength and health, oh, God. Give help that is supernatural, oh, God. In these days, Lord, when she's struggling, oh, Lord, to move and to walk, oh, God, you're real. You're so real, and we look to you, Lord Jesus. We look to you, Lord Jesus. Oh, you're our heavenly Father, and you watch over your own. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Anybody else? Yes, Lord. Anyone else? Shakatoso yabaki. Father, what an unusual service this morning. But what a blessing to be in your presence. What a blessing to know that you have a move coming to us, O oh God. And help us, Lord, to set our mind upon you that we recognize it and we do not miss it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, go with us today, Lord. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your keeping, O oh God. We thank you for shining your light upon us as we walk this path following you to the best of our ability. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.